in the church said? Amen. Amen. I want to welcome you to this morning service and those that are watching us via Facebook or the internet, we'd like to welcome you as well. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ecclesiastes, we're going to jump back into our series of sermon in which we started a few months ago in the book of Ecclesiastes. I've entitled Life Under the Sun as a as a young brother thought life under the sun. We're dealing with Solomon. He is the core left. He's the preacher. He's the one that is addressing the congregation. And I use, want to use for a subject this morning the pursuit of pleasure. The pursuit of pleasure. Everyone standing with your Bibles open. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 starting with verse number 1. As I read aloud, read along with me in your Bibles silently. Ecclesiastes 2 and 1 says, and said in mine heart, go to now, and I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? Question. And I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under heaven all the days of their life. Verse 4 said, And I made me great works, and I built me houses, and planted me vineyards, and I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water, to water therewith the woods that bringeth forth trees. Verse 7 says, And I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house. Also I have great possessions, of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold, and precious treasures of kings and of providence. I got me men singers. He must be from High Spring. He said, I got me singers and women singers and delights of the son of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me and whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I, with, I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Verse 11 says, Then I looked on all the works that my hands has wrought, and on the labor that I have labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit and there was no prophet under the sun let us pray father god we, again we thank you for this opportunity to be here as we come now to break the bread of life i pray now that you will, will uh, uh, lift me up into your storehouse of wisdom you will anoint me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet you give me preaching power from on high that i can preach this sermon with power and with clarity like John said, let me now decrease while you increase. That you always hear from you and never from me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you and thank you. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to continue in a series of sermons I've said in which we started several months ago. We want to pick back up with chapter 2. And I have entitled this sermon for this time together, The Pursuit of a Pleasure. The book is written by Solomon. Solomon is the son of David, the king of Jerusalem. Solomon here is searching for the age-old question, what is the meaning of life? 
And I know that's a question we may have asked ourselves before. What is the mean? Why am I here? What is my purpose here? What am I supposed to uh, be doing here? Solomon confesses that there's much that we cannot in, in our lives control that we can't control. He confesses that and there is a lot in life that we can't control and that we can do absolutely nothing about. In these 12 uh, chapters, he used the word vanity 38 times. He said vanity is vanity. All is vanity. That simply means meaningless, uh, void. Solomon is in search of meaningfulness. Life is filled with transient things here today and gone tomorrow. Then life is filled with permanent things. You know, I, you, we only hear about three score by reason of strength. Uh, ten, seven years that is transient. We're here today and going tomorrow, but there are permanent things in the earth. The sun is going to rise and the sun is going to set. I can be dead for 50. Everybody in here could have died and gone to heaven and the sun is still going to rise and it's going to set. Yeah. Some things are permanent, uh, but, but, but Solomon here says some things are, are transient. Life lived on earth without Christ is meaningless. It's basically what Solomon has come to the conclusion that there's many things that we can do. There's pleasures in life, but apart from Christ, life is meaningless. In Proverbs, he was a wise speaker, and he gave us advice and wisdom. In Ecclesiastes, he's the, the preacher, the coalesce. He's the one that is addressing the congregation, and much that he advised, he did not live by. It's just like they to say, you know, do as I say and not as I as I do. Solomon's downfall was that his his love for women turned his heart away from God. Listen, we live in a society that feels that if it feels good, it must be right. There is no standard, there's no moral, there's no integrity in this world in which we live. The motto is, if it feels good, then it must be okay. It must be right. We live in a society that is searching for the meaning of life. There's always a continual restlessness of moving. There's it never being satisfied with anything. We live in a world where no one is really satisfied. That's why we have surgeries and liposuction because the world has dictated to us how we ought to look. First it was breast implants and now it's butt implants and now it's lip therapy. Now you have guys getting implants so they can have pets and their backs can spread. Instead of going to the gym, they go have implants in their chest so a man can have a chest overnight. I saw one guy, he had seven implants in his back in order for his back to, to spread, you know, just go to the gym. But what, that, that comes from never being satisfied. Have you ever seen somebody that's never satisfied? They never can keep a job. There's always something wrong with the job. They never can keep a man. There's always something wrong with, with, with the man. They never can. They all, they unsatisfied. That's the world that we live in today. No one is really satisfied. We're trying to find ways to adapt and, and do things to cause us, or in our mindset, to cause us to be satisfied. But Solomon here said, apart from Christ, life is meaningless. Apart from Christ, you'll never be satisfied. You'll never be satisfied on a job. You'll never be satisfied with a man. You'll never be satisfied with a woman. You'll never be satisfied with a house or satisfied with a car or even satisfied with yourself. I seen one lady, she had like almost 300 surgeries. She looked like a fool. But she said she wanted to look like Angelina Jolie and one lady want to look like a Barbie doll and the, 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 the same things they used to laugh at not the same things that they want. Mm -hmm. Folks are dying daily because of this augmentation or these implants because the world has dictated to us how we ought to look. But notice under the subject the pursuit of pledge, I want us to notice three things. First of all, I want us to notice the pursuit of passion revealed. Secondly, it's the pursuit of possession 
reviewed, and thirdly, it's the pursuit of prestige that is recorded. But notice point number one, the pursuit of passion that is revealed in verses one, two, and three. It was Solomon's pursuit of passion and pleasure. It's the idea of wanting more only to find that it's vanity. Solomon was a man, and Solomon is going to do an experiment. This whole chapter, chapter 2, the first 11 verses, let me give you an understanding. Uh, Solomon is going to do an experiment, which is a first-hand uh, experiment. You can write a story, you can do research and write it, what it's like to, to do 25 years in prison. What Solomon says, I'm going to go out and commit a crime. And I'm going to spend 25 years in prison only to do an experiment to see what life is like in prison. You will never know what life is like in prison unless you experience it. Now, you can watch the movies, and sometimes I watch behind bars or women behind bars, but you'll never know. So Solomon said, I'm going to experiment with several things, and I want to know in the end, at the end of the day, does it bring satisfaction in my life? It's the idea of wanting more and more and more to only find that in the end, it's vanity. There are those today that seek the thrills of life. That's why some folks get high. That's why some folks drink and some folks indulge in women and folks go on trips. Some people have the mindset, if I can just get out of the country, it's going to bring me satisfaction. Only to find when you return, your problems are still the same. Yeah. They have the mindset that, listen, I can go to a thing. That's why roller coasters are so popular. Because it's the thrill of the ride. You couldn't get me on a, you don't have enough money in the world to get me on a roller coaster. But some folks love the thrill in the, the, what they call the slingshot, where it shoots you up in the air, you bounce back and forth on the bungee cord. But some people are just seeking the thrills of, uh, of life, and some people think that the thrills of life will provide them satisfaction, and it will fill the void. People are lost today and they feel like if I could just have another thrill, if I could just go here, if I could just do that, it's going to bring me satisfaction. And Solomon saying, now let me do the experiment. I want y'all to really pay attention because Solomon is going to break this down. So Solomon is going to experience what he's saying. He's going to indulge in the things of this world to find out whether or not it will bring satisfaction. But notice the indulgence and, and worldliness there in verse 1 and 2. And he says, And I said in my heart, Go to now, and I will test thee with pleasure. That word mirth is pleasure. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. And behold, stop looking intently. This is all vanity. Solomon says, I, will, I said in my heart. In other words, Solomon is talking to himself. Solomon said, I said to myself, I'm going to test pleasure. Now there it was an old lady that lived on West 31st Street. She said it's okay to talk to yourself just as long as you don't answer back. Because when you answer back then therefore you have a, a problem. But his indulgence and, and worldliness, he wanted to he wanted to do and see. Solomon said in his own heart, he thought to himself, uh, what can I accomplish? And laughter and fun and clubs in the world in the end Solomon said it is all vain and void apart from Christ you can go to the club you can have laughter from you can have a cookout you can have all the fun in the world only to admit to himself that it's void many today have the mindset that if I just go on another trip if I could just get to the club, if I could just get married, if I could just get a divorce or whatever the case is then I'm going to be satisfied Solomon said, listen, just another trip and I'll be satisfied only to find that it's useless. The world is trying to find satisfaction in lewdness, sex, immorality, vulgarity, homosexuality. If you don't believe me, just turn on the television and every show has some form of lewdness, sex, immorality, vulgarity, or homosexuality. 
all these reality shows. They're just a forum for them to simply just display the junk of their life. And it's always dealing with immorality and some kind of sexual, homosexual activity. Only to find that it's only vain and void and it's absolutely useless. God gets no, no glory out of any of the people today of this world will pay millions of dollars. They'll pay just about anything for an experience. Solomon here is the richest, wisest man that ever walked the planet. And Solomon has the resources. Solomon can actually take the trips. Solomon can simply say, I'm going to get in my private jet. And I'm going to fly to this country and I'm, going to fly, and I'm going to experience the finer things in life. So the first experiment he does is the experiments or the indulgences and wantonness of the indulgences and worldliness. Solomon said, I try everything that's in the world. I tried the club. I tried, I, I tried the, the barbecues. I, I went here on this vacation. There was laughter and there was fun. But he said, all in the end, it is all vain and void. Notice the indulgence in, in wine, the experiments he, he used here in wine. Solomon says, after the worldliness, after the laughter, the sex, the fun, he failed and then he turned to the bottle. He simply said, after I tried all the stuff in the world and it brought me absolutely nothing but vanity of vain, it was emptiness. Solomon said, now I'm turning to the bottle. Solomon simply saying, now I'm going to turn to, to drinking. And many have become alcoholics uh, simply because they're trying to bury their problems in the bottle. Many folks are depressed. Many folks have problems because of the situations of the world. And they turn to the bottle in order to try to drown their sorrows or drown their problems. But guess what happens when you sober up? Well, it's two, three days later, but when you sober up, your problems are still there. Solomon said, I've tried the experience, that I've tried the world, all that's in the world, the, the fun, the last, I've turned to the bottle. And this is why you find so many people now that are drinking, because many of them trying to drown their sorrows. Paul, he, Solomon here says, I'm talking about myself, and he said, I decided... I'm doing an experiment that I'm going to live my life this way. Now you got a lot of Christians today think that it's nothing wrong with drinking. Drinking makes me feel good. You know, a lot of folks have the mindset, in order for me to have a good time, I've got to drink. Now I'm growing up and coming up in the, in the world, that was my mindset. If you had a cookout, if you had a party, whatever you had, you had to have drinking. Why? Because drinking is what makes excitement. It is not fun to have a party or a cookout or go to the club without drinking. It's the mindset that drinking, it causes us to have fun. It's a temporary escape from the burdens of life. But it says that, listen, drinking ought not be done by Christians. I didn't lock that text in, but Proverbs 23 uh, 29 through 35 is just one scripture uh, in the Bible that talks about why we should not drink. But he says his indulgence in, in wine, but notice also his indulgence in women in verse 3. And he said, I sought in my heart that I would give myself to wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly that I might see what that is good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. He said, I lay a hold to folly. He's in search of pleasures of the world. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. The more women you had was the more power and position because of chasing after the world. We have all kinds of diseases, unwanted pregnancies, broken marriages. We no longer call sin, sin. It was Isaiah 6 and 20 said, woe unto them that call right wrong and wrong right. We live in a world that says it's okay that we indulge in sexual sin. Solomon realized that the way to find satisfaction is through Christ. He said, I did an experiment with, with women. Solomon had more women. You, you think, you, what, what was the guy? Not Hugh Hefner that started the Playboy Mansion. Was it Hugh Hefner? Dude, 
that started to, whomever he is, he died not too long ago. Now, his, what he called the Playboy Mansion is just like kitty land compared to what Solomon had. Solomon had 1,000, just, just the one that he accounted for. He had the original Playboy Mansion with 700 wives, 300 concubines. He said, listen, I'm going to do an experiment on women because women does not bring satisfaction apart from Christ. Jeff Bezos. What is the guy that used to be on the on today's show? Matt Lowry. You know, if, if women brought pleasure, why is it that men still cheat on their wife when they got everything? If that's the case, and Solomon said, listen, apart from God, I don't care how women, many women or what you do sexually, it would not bring satisfaction. Maybe satisfaction for the moment, but it would not bring lasting satisfaction. You can look at a lot of these folks, Steve Harvey and the rest of them. If that was the case, none of them would be going through divorce at this moment as we as we speak. But his indulgence in women, he said, I laid hold to folly. It's a search of pleasure. He even said, women will not bring you lasting pleasure. I thought about Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon. He just went through a 100, I think it's 100 billion dollar divorce because of it's always we see something else that we want because we're not satisfied with what we already have. And that's the problem with society today. The men, they want to trade it in on a newer model. And I, I can't understand. You got, you already married and you already successful. And if the women and the money brings satisfaction, there's no need to look outside of the marriage in order to be satisfied. Because we always see something that we want. But Solomon realized that even through all of these women, all of the pleasures of the world, the fun, the party, the thrills, the drinking, it does not bring lasting satisfaction. Notice point number two, the pursuit of possession review. Now, there's nothing wrong with wealth, and there's nothing wrong with pleasure. God has designed us to enjoy pleasure within the parameter in which God has established. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with, 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 with pleasure. But he's saying that apart from Christ, there is no lasting pleasure. That's why people uh, do what they do because they're not satisfied. You ever seen somebody, every time you see them, they were a different person. They would have been a different job. They never can say, well, I've got longevity in this job because when I get there, you know what? I don't like this person. I don't like this person. I don't like this person. This person rubbed me wrong. It's because of not having a relationship with God, not being satisfied. I don't know who goes to a job and the job is perfect and you really like what you do. Maybe if you, you know, something that you went to college and maybe something you're doing like if I'm pastoring, that's my only job, that would be different. But as I go to the thing, get on my last nerve at the post office. I got wake up in the morning, ain't got but one nerve and then get on that one. But that's no reason to say I'm going to quit because they get on my nerve. A lot of folks are just not, not, not satisfied. Now listen to his indulgence in wealth in verses 4 through 7. He said, I made me great works, and I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made me pools of water to water them, the woods that would bring forth trees. I got me servants and maids and servants that were born in my house. And I had great possessions, great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. He had servants. He was so rich. It probably he, he had somebody to, to uh, feed him his grapes, peel his banana. He said, I had servants and maid servants. He probably experienced the pleasures of life. Solomon probably had to do absolutely nothing. Everything was done for him. Notice he said that he has, first of all, opulent houses. What he has in wanting to get it, it only brings misery. you never seen a, for a person that is poor uh, uh, is in a psychiatrist's office because he's poor. 
Only those that are rich, only those that have everything, for whatever reason, it brings misery if they're rich apart from a relationship with God. It brings misery. Notice Solomon said his opulent houses, 13 years it took Solomon to build his own house. Seven years of building the temple, he built houses for his wife. Solomon was a builder. Solomon had the mindset that I have the biggest house on the block. You got to have the biggest house, the, the best car. This is what Sol Solomon here is saying. He had the best 13 years in building. Solomon's home was, had to be beautiful. It took seven years to build the temple. It was one of the eight wonders of the world. Can you just imagine Solomon's home, what his home was, was like? He had the biggest house on the block. Many of us have uh, the mindset, the more I have, the better off I am. The more I have, that will satisfy me. Only if I had a house, only if I had a, a better car, a, a bigger house, only this, only that is going to bring satisfaction. Solomon said, I did investigation. This is what I've done. I've sat there and I've, I've went through it. And I remember one guy said, well, it's an experiment, say, with the uh, strip clubs. Solomon said, I've done it. Solomon said, I just didn't uh, read about it. Solomon said, I went in the club. I went to the VIP section. That's, I heard they got one. I don't know for sure, but <laughs> that's what I heard. Solomon said, that, listen, I, I, I went in and I experienced it and it brings no lasting satisfaction. He said, I have the, the homes, I have the main service, I have the land, I have it all. But say, at the end of the day, all this does not bring me satisfaction. A lot of us say, well, just give it to me. But apart from, from Christ is what he's saying, that we have no, no satisfaction. Faction. You can have all the money uh, in the world and it does not bring satisfaction because what we're going to do, we're going to be watching our money, counting our money, make sure no nobody take it, get over on us. It becomes a burden of life, he's saying, when you have all of this and then in the end of the day, you're still sad. You're still lonely. You're still dissatisfied. You're still downtrodden, downhearted at the end of the day. He said opulent homes. He also said ornate lands. He said he have land. He have home. He have everything. But that does not give meaning to life. Just because you have a big house and your house has 17 bathrooms and 220 rooms and it's sitting on 5,000 acres, that does not bring satisfaction. Solomon said, I've got it all. He said, I've tried it all. I've tried everything that you can imagine. For a man that has Solomon's wealth and Solomon's ability, Solomon actually took it to the extreme and he tried it all. He said, but what you have won't give you meaning of life. It does not bring satisfaction. Because those that are rich, I watched the show about the ones who won the lottery. They said that was the worst thing that ever happened to them. Several of them committed suicide. At the end of the day, they felt that life was not worth living. But notice the ostentatious possession there. He said, and I have servants and great herds of cattle. Solomon said, and look at me. Look what I've done. Solomon is literally bragging on himself and saying, all that I have done, many today will rob God, stay out of church because of an opulent lifestyle. Because they want to have this lifestyle. They will rob God, stay out of the church, not give what they're supposed to give because of the lifestyle in which they're trying to live. Trying to run with the Joneses trying to keep up with the name of the Bible said with much is given much is required he said I've arrived only to find themselves committing suicide find themselves in rehab strung out on alcohol strung out on on drugs only to find at the end of the day after having all of the possession all of the land the home having all of the riches only to find yourself at the end of the day committing suicide and I can name several of them, Kurt Cobain, and those that know who you are. The guy used to do the, the lifestyle of the rich and famous. About a couple years ago, he committed suicide. Could, why? I mean, what is it? What is it? You got all the money. You got all the possessions. You have all the resources in the world. But how do you come to the conclusion that life has no meaning? I must commit suicide. Those that are rich, if they lose what they have, 
they are so downtrodden that life is no longer worth living that they kill themselves in the process. I remember Enron. Now, the Enron had uh, went down and the folks lost everything they had. The next day, they were jumping out of skyscrapers because in their mindset that I don't have anything to live for apart from Christ's riches does not bring uh, a satisfaction. Partying does not bring satisfaction. Drinking and drugs and the highlight and the thrills of life does not bring lasting satisfaction. It is only when you have a relationship with God that you will be satisfied with what you have. God says in whatever state that you're in, wherefore be be content. I may not have have a biz. I may not have 17 bedrooms, but at least I got I got three bedrooms. I got four bedrooms. I may not have this, but at least I can get around. I may not be a doctor, a cardiologist, but at least I have a job. We ought to learn how to be satisfied. Well, what we have, but Solomon said, I've done the test. I went through the course, and there is no satisfaction at the end of the day that you have anything apart from Christ. But notice his indulgences and weakness in verse number 8. And he said, I gather me all the silver and the gold and all the particular treasure and of the providence, and I got me men singers and women singers. Now, that, now that simply means there. Now, you go to a Beyonce concert. Solomon called Beyonce to come to him and give him a concert. That's what Solomon had. Solomon said, I don't have to go. I buy the concert. I buy you. I buy the stage. You come to my house and you perform the concert in front of me. Solomon said, I don't have to go anywhere. You remember the Queen of Sheba? When she came to see Solomon, Solomon said, listen, I've got singers. And it says, and the delight of the son of men as musical instruments of all Source. Now that word, now that this is kind of odd. Watch this. Watch this. The musical instrument is talking about women. It is not talking about what we call musical instruments. And he says, the delight of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. What delight is it in the life of a man than a woman? Solomon said, listen, that I had all sorts of women. That means short and tall. You know, white, black, Filipino, he had, from Africa, whatever you want to call it, he had a, a, a ratio of all women. And it says here, and that's the delight of the sons of men, talking about men of humanity there. There's nothing greater than the sight of a man than a woman. That's why I don't understand this homosexuality thing. That is just the working of the devil because God has already put in us the desire to, to want the opposite sex. It's just a trick of the, the devil. But he said, listen, everything in my heart I wanted. And he said that he had a heart for the things of this world. That's fun and sex and wine and women. And he said, I didn't hold back. I didn't, whatever I wanted, I got. Whatever I wanted to do, I did. He said, I didn't hold back. Now, one iota of anything that I wanted, because he said, I want to do the experiment, and I want to encounter, I want to uh, uh, see what it's like, so I can say at the end of the day whether or not it's going to bring fulfillment and satisfaction in life. And Solomon said it does not bring satisfaction. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how many houses you have, summer house, winter house. I don't care how many women you have. If you don't have Christ in your life, you will not be satisfied. Amen. You would think somebody that had three, four hundred million dollars would just be the happiest person in the world. But that is totally opposite from those that Solomon said who was the richest man that they, that they ever was. He says, whatever was in my heart, I wanted. He said, I had a heart for things of the world. That's fun and wine and women. He didn't hold back, not one iota of a thing. He said, listen, everything he wanted, but you can't love the mammon and God. You can't love the world and God. You must make a choice as to whom you want to serve. You remember the story of the rich young ruler. He had it all. He was wrong and he was rich and he was a ruler. He had position. He had authority. He had, he had power but when Jesus told him to go sell all that he had, give it to the poor and follow me, he couldn't do it because he loved his riches more than he loved the Savior. <laughs> There's a lot of folks like that in this world today but we're talking about the, the pursuit of pleasure. We've looked at the pursuit of passion revealed the pursuit of of, of possessions reviewed, but notice lastly 
And finally, in verses 9, 10, and 11, we see the pursuit of prestige recorded. But notice the pursuit of prestige there. First of all, there, look at verse number 9. And he said, So I was great and increased more than all that there were before me in Jerusalem. Also, I had my wisdom remained in me. Let's stop right there. He said, my wisdom remained in, in me. So Solomon didn't say that I became a, a porn addict. I, I, didn't, I didn't become a drunk. He said, my, my wisdom, my mind was with me. So as I was drinking, I still had my wisdom. As I, I'm just doing an experiment. He said, I didn't lose control now. Don't think for a moment that Solomon had just said, I'm going to abandon God. I'm going to go into the world. I'm going to live like the world. No, he said, I'm doing an experiment. He said, I still had my faculties. I still had my mind remain with me. So he didn't say, I'm going to become a drunk. I'm going to become a drug addict. I'm just going to forget Christ and go into the world. He said, I'm simply going to do an experiment, and I want to experiment with the pleasures of, of life. But even, and I have to read this one. This is what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 4. He just said, though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he has will of that he might trust in in the flesh I more. He said, listen to my pedigree that he gave. He said, circumcised on the eighth day, the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews, touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, uh, persecuting the church, touching righteousness, which is of the law. He said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted as lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. Paul says everything that I have accomplished on the other side of the cross, he said it is but dumb uh, without the excellency or the relation with God. Paul said that this is the, the best thing is my relationship with God. Apart from all of the accolades, apart from all of the things that I have achieved, and a lot of folks think our achievements is what make us great, but it's not what makes us great. It's our relationship with God is what makes us great. Yes, you have all the degrees, more than a thermometer, but yet you still can be unhappy, disheartened, and downtrodden. He says, apart from Christ, Listen, he says it's vain, it's, it's useless. Paul says all that he have is dumb for the exorcism to know Christ, but notice his indulgence and want, the pronouncement there. He said, basically, he said, I'm the greatest. He said, I'm the, I'm the greatest, I have, I have it all, but, but still there's no, no happiness in having all that the world has to offer. And he had more than the world had to offer than anybody that's ever walked the planet. You got um, uh, Jeff Bezos and Donald Trump, these billionaires, don't have anything on Solomon. And Solomon said, out of all the things in the world, if you had them all, it won't bring you satisfaction. <laughs> You won't be happy. If you're not happy with one woman, you're not going to be happy with ten of them. A hundred of them. It, as a matter of fact, it's probably going to make things a whole lot worse. But he said, if you're not happy with what you have outside of Christ, he said, I'm the greatest and I have it all, but, but I'm still, and I said, basically still not happy. There's nothing in the world that brings satisfaction apart from Christ. In verse 10, we see the pride. He said, I got it all. Pride in having it all. And no one else. He said, I have more than anybody that's ever lived on the planet and that will ever live after me. He said, I have more than them all. Solomon probably had a, a more than all of them put together let me read his daily his daily menu here it's in uh first kings chapter 4 verse 22 and it says in solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of fine flour three score measures of meal 10 fat oxen 30 oxen out of the pasture or 100 sheep besides the hawk and the robust and the fellow deer and the fatted fowl that was his that was his daily allotment for one day that's a whole lot of food. That's a whole lot of money. Solomon says, I, I had it all in, in, in pride. And what we have, we should share 
with the world, but he says, I got it all. And his pride is built up on the inside of him, but his indulgence and want, but it was insight and waste in verse 11. And he said, <laughs> verse 11, he says, and then I looked on all the works that my hand have, uh, of my hands had wrought, and the labor that I have labored to do. And behold, I mean, stop and look intently. Solomon said, now after I've conducted this in spirit, after I've, I've, I've ran the course, after I did the drinking, I had the women, I had all of this. And he says, Behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Solomon said, Listen, I tried it all. There's nothing that you can do under the sun that's going to bring you satisfaction. A lot of folks say, Only oh, if I had money, or oh, even if you have money, you can have whatever it is apart from Christ. There is no satisfaction. Solomon said, I looked at my possessions, my wealth, the fun, the laughter, the women, the labor that I've done, and behold, I saw it all as having no profit and no benefit. I don't care what you do in life. It will not bring satisfaction. And we all know people like this around our circle. They're never satisfied. They don't go to church. They don't read their Bible. They don't have a relationship with God. And if you look at their life, then they're, they're hopping from here to here to here to here. They want to do this one day. The next day they want to do this. They got this person. The next day they got this person. It's just never being satisfied. Listen, as I close, Solomon comes to the conclusion that all fail to bring enduring satisfaction. I didn't say that moment, you know, satisfaction for the moment. For the time that we're drinking or the time that you're in the club, the time that you have men and women around you, the time that you're at the concert with the singers, and the time you do this, you say, but enduring satisfaction, lifelong satisfaction. Only when you have Jesus Christ in your life will you have satisfaction that will last for the eternity or for the lasting of your life. I can always say, whatever state I'm in, I'm satisfied. I got one woman, I'm satisfied. Three kids, I'm satisfied. May not have the biggest house or the best car, but guess what? I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with what God has given me. But those that don't know Christ can't say the same thing. I want to turn this wife in and get me another one. I want to turn this car in because I'm, it's gotten old, but that's the mindset of the world as not being satisfied. Just look at the doctors and the cosmetic, the cosmetic surgeons are off the chart when it comes to money because no one is satisfied with the way they look. I can do this better and I can do this better because the world has said that I ought to look a certain way. But apart from Christ, Solomon said there's no satisfaction. Things of the world, chasing the world, chasing the wind, only brings emptiness. At the end of the day, you're still sad. You're still lonely. At the end of the day, you still have, have problems. Because nothing in life is going to bring you satisfaction apart from Christ. Solomon uh, relates how he tried to try pleasure and wealth and, 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 and delight and in, in every effort to find a fulfillment and in this good life, empty and void. Listen, life was still void without satisfaction. We can only find lasting peace, fulfillment, joy, if we look to our Savior, we look to God and we look to His will. Amen. If we look to God and if we look to the will of God in our lives, it will bring us total satisfaction no matter how little or no matter how great. But when you start saying I'm up or down, that means you're comparing yourself to someone else. Just be happy with what God has Amen. given you. Amen. Solomon say, listen folks, you know, I'm not just going to write a book. I'm not going to do the research. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go and, and I'm going to do it. You know, then I can give you the illustration of, I'm going to go to prison. I'm going to do 25 years in the joint. I want to know what it's like to be in general population or what it's like to have to eat the food 
of a prisoner, what it's like to be treated. And Prince Solomon said, I'm going to do the experiment. And then he says, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I find it all as empty, void, without me. This is a sermon that speaks to me. And I hope that it speaks to you at one point in time in my life. I tried to do the drinking and all of that only to find out when you woke up, sobered up, after you done went through all of, of being sick and all of that, guess what? All the problems, they're still there. The only thing you're doing is compounding your problems. You're just making more problems to the problems that you already have. But general lasting satisfaction only comes in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen, amen and amen. amen. We're going to get ready for our...